talking. Hey, it's a party. Hey there, Sensi. Uh, hey there, uh, Shoot, shooty group or shoot group. Vaseline next to the computer. Mm. Where's the vas? Oh, are you talking about? Are you talking about this? Oh yeah. No evil thoughts. I, you know, I'm a runner in a high altitude. <laughs> I got to put it on my skin. I also have this next to my phone uh, here. All the accoutre. All the accoutre. Oh wait, now if you really want to find out what's on my desk here. This is what I do on bad days or celebratory days. Little bottles of alcohol. And Saturdays. And Saturdays. And mm -hmm. I opened, oh, we had, yesterday was a really big day. We opened up, uh, we opened up a bottle, a $100 bottle of wine from our Phila Vineyards uh, in Escondido because we hit 2,000, 2,000 plus subscribers on my YouTube channel. Can I have a round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you. And those are 2,000 people who want to see Crazy Claude videos on YouTube.com slash CD Mentor. There I slipped in my little subtle plug. Anyway, I'm going to start. Rec we are recording. And I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking with Dirk Waters. And um, Dirk, um, I'm going to hand this over to you. You found a deal, um, an amazing deal. You're in California. You found a deal 3,000 miles away. People always ask me, should I do real estate deals? in my backyard or wherever. And I always say, start in your backyard. It's common sense. But you found a deal 3,000 miles away. You got it under contract. It's tremendously under market. And um, introduce, your, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody about the deal, how you found it, how you negotiated it. Give us the nitty gritty details. I may interrupt you once in a while uh, for people who are coming on there. Um, we, ha we have Daniel Scotty who came on there. And um, we also have John DeManis. Hi, John. Thanks for joining us. If you have a question for J Dirk after he explains his real estate deal, um, my name is Claude Diamond. I love real estate. I've been doing it personally, my own portfolio. I use lease options. I do a lot of other strategies. Um, I love leverage and controlling other people's properties and remarketing them, or as I call it, arbitrage, getting control for as little money as possible and remarketing or subletting or renting the property. And um, I'm going to shut up now and uh, let me give this over to Dirk. Dirk, thanks for helping us out and sharing your deal with everybody who's watching this today. Sure, Claude. Yeah, I'm uh, name's Dirk Waters. I'm a creative real estate investor based out of San Diego, California, where Mr. Diamond lives half of the year. Um, what's that? Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond Claude. Claude. I'm only old enough to be your father, not your grandfather. I know. I know. But anyway, I, uh, I have relationships with a handful of uh, other investors that just have too many leads to handle. So one, sometimes I'll you know, reach out to a lead for them, um, you know, and, and I get to keep that that lead. We, we, we trade back and forth with, with some other stuff. But anyway, I called this lead. It's a lead out of Georgia, uh, Canton, Georgia, to be exact. And uh, it's a divorce situation. Uh, you know, a, a couple that needs to sell their home very quickly. Um, got it under market. It's a beautiful property. Uh, the property, as is, is worth conservatively four thirty to to four fifty, maybe even upwards of that. Um, we were able to get it under contract for less. Um, you know, asking with an assignment fee about three seventy five, and the place needs no work. No work at all. It's absolutely turnkey. Um, so, you know, if you picked it up from me, you'd be able to make 55, 60, uh, e even upwards of that, um, you know, $60,000. So it's a great deal. Uh, it doesn't need any work. It's it's totally turnkey. A beautiful property. The place was built in uh, 2004. You got a picture to um, hold up? You got a picture? Let me hold on. Of the, uh, this property is beautiful. How did you find, let me interview you a little. How did you find this deal 3000 miles away? Like I said, I, you know, I have somebody that has too many leads that they can handle so that, you know, if that happens, they'll give me some, I reached out to that person. It was just a lead. But who is this that, mystery that, person? How did you find them? How did you seek them out? Uh, how did, is it someone you knew before or somebody you advertised for on Craigslist? How, where did this wonderful person who gave you this lead come from? <laughs> well, she's another investor. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I like to do a lot of networking, you know, online, social networking. Um, you know, I use, utilize biggerpockets.com, uh, various Facebook groups, and just introduce myself to people, get involved in discussions that are going on about real estate, 
know, about rehabs, assignments, lease option, owner financing. Just talk to people, get to know them, you know, and you know, I let them see me as a professional. And I, I, you know, I was chatting with this person. She said, you know, I have so many leads. I don't even have time to call them all. Um, and, you know, would you like me to send you a couple every week? And I said, sure. And this you happened to be one an arrangement with her, a deal where she gets a percentage or where you pay her up front for leads or. Yeah, well, th this particular person, I pay them, I pay them up front. OK, so it's a flat fee. Um, you know, I pay her 10 bucks a lead. So it's it's a great deal for me. So everybody, know. anybody who's getting into real estate, one of the techniques or marketing ideas that you're share, sharing with people today is find somebody who's um, a bird dog or a good finder or real estate. If somebody who's out there who can find deals, hey, James Dunwoody, how you doing, buddy? If you want to come on um, uh, Blab here, we got some. I'd love to for you to come on because you have great deals to talk about, too. Um, anyway, so you you seek out people who have found deals and will call you back with it. You're spreading, you're having other people, you're multiplying your efforts. Exactly. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm leveraging my time, Okay. you know, because th these people are doing a, a lot of marketing and they're getting more than they can handle. You know, if I have some extra time to call those, uh, to call some extra leads, I'll, I'll certainly do that, you know, in exchange for either a flat fee or, you know, in some cases, a percentage of the deal. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, James Dunwoody is on uh, Periscope. We're simul broadcasting on Periscope. And he asked, how do I get onto a uh, blab? Uh, the best way, if you have a laptop, go on to Chrome. Uh, if you have Chrome as a uh, as your uh, search, uh, uh, whatever you call it, um, uh, for searching or whatever, like Google, go on to Chrome and um, just type in blab.im. And um, oh, and you can just oh, on your cell phone, you can just download the application, I believe, right, uh, Dirk, uh, for Blab. I have it on my iPhone. Can, yes. And then you mm -hmm. can just join in. Um, and if other people want to join in today, we have two empty seats here. Uh, feel free to join in or type or text in a question on either Blab or on Periscope. I know a lot of us are still learning this new technology. And um, I see this as not only an education tool, but as a marketing tool. And we'll talk about that later. I want to get more in this deal. So you first thing we're taking away from this interview is, Dirk, you found other people who are filter, or who are giving you deals. You look for You're giving me opportunities. Yes, other please. opportunities. OK, great. And so this girl called you, emailed you, whatever. She sent you this deal. Where did you go from there? What happened? You pick up the phone. You send an email. Where did you go? Uh, you know, I, I love picking up the phone. I think emailing, if, if you do it, it, that's fine if you have to, but it's a little passive. When you get somebody on the phone, you're able to, you know, pick up on cues, get all your questions answered and kind of see where you need to direct the, so the deal. We all, I think, you know, we got to give good phone. We got to get our skill sets. To me, you know what, you could be the smartest guy in the world, know all the technologies, all the strategies, go to a million seminars. And the, and the trouble is that if you get on the phone and you're tongue tied or you don't understand the psychology or the empathy of that other person, it doesn't matter how much education you have, how much money you spend, you're doomed to fail. So I really, I, you know, uh, to your, uh, I, you know, I think it's great that you just pick up the phone and talk to people. That, that's the way I built up a multi-million dollar business, talking to people. Right. And I think we've lost that. Have we lost it? A little bit. You know, I think it's it's so easy to connect, shit, you know, social media, keyboard warriors. That, uh, <laughs> Have we forgot how to speak to people? I think. Well, I think you, you could see that a little more in my my generation, the millennial generation. Yeah. How did you you have a beautiful girlfriend? How did you meet her by texting? <laughs> no, I, I went up to her. You went up to her. In Good person. Stuff. Live. Balls. You went up. Hi, my name's Dirk. Can I buy you a drink? Can I say hello? You know, mm -hmm. whatever. What was your line? I'm just uh, let's uh, deviate here just for one second. What was your <laughs> what was your magic line? I don't know. Come on. I don't know if it's uh <laughs> it was inappropriate. No. <laughs> I put you on the spot there. James Dudwoody, okay, you're still on Periscope, buddy. You got to go on to Blab, B-L-A-B dot I-M. 
and we'll we'll get in we'll and just uh, click on one of the seats there in the video and one of the boxes and you can go right on sorry it, it interrupted you again talk about <laughs> talk about the um uh picking up the phone you called up these people what happened what were the magic words there really i mean nothing too special what i'm doing is uh they're expecting my phone call number one which is nice you know it's not a totally cold call because they've already reached out to the person that gave me the lead so i'm just going down and i'm i'm trying to figure out you know what's the deal you know what where's the property is it marketable um what's the condition does it need work does it not this particular one doesn't need any work and what's the situation well, what's the hurry to sell why are they selling um, you know, what would they like to get and what can I get it for? So that's what I'm trying to figure out, you know, for this deal. Well, how um, did they react to you, Dirk? What was their reaction? You called up out of nowhere, these people. You found out this lead. What was, well, let me take a step backwards. The the lady who gave you the lead, did she tell you anything specific uh, about the property? Uh, Were they motivated? No. no, not really. Basically, all I had was the address um, and you know, I knew that the, the seller had reached out to her and that they wanted to sell. So that's all I knew. But at, at the very least, the, the seller was expecting my phone call. Okay. And what was their motivation? Why did they want to do the deal with you? They, they need a quick cash sale. It's a divorce situation. Ah, now we're getting to the... Yeah, the so that, that's the motivation. They, yeah. they really... Then the, what the speed of sale was key to them. You know, I even had to agree to a shorter escrow period, but that that's okay because it, it got me the price. It got it got you the deal. So how long did it take? Now, this is the part I want to know. How long did it take you to do this deal? Not very long at all. The the initial phone call probably took five five or six minutes. I sent over a contract. They they accepted the offer. And that was it. I got it under contract. Wow. So how did you, uh, was it one conversation, two? Did you get an agreement on the phone, a tentative agreement? You sent them the, um, um, you sent them the contract the same day. Let me, let me hear about, so, let me put it, give it to me in a step-by-step -step for people. Who, okay. There's a lot of people out there who are listening to this who have never done a real estate deal and are fascinated by it. And you know, all the bullshit we get from the gurus at the seminars. You're doing a real right. deal here. I want to hear how you, what did you say to these people? How did you recognize it was a deal? What strategy did, did you use? Okay. So um, the first, it was, it was two phone calls. Uh, so the first phone call was basically my qualification. I'm qualifying the property and the seller. So I want to see, is this a good property? Is it a marketable property? You know, can I get it at a price where I can make money or could I get it under a lease option or an owner financing? you know, at terms so that I can make money. So I realized right away that their motivation was speed of sale. And for that speed of sale, they were willing to to drop the price and go below, below market. So I know it's going to be a below market deal. And then the next thing I wanted to do is find out, you know, what, what does this property look like? Where is it? Is it marketable? So I, you know, I asked a couple questions about, you know, the area, schools, great schools great area, you know, located to, uh, located close to the downtown, uh, you know, in that particular town. Um, and, and, you know, I, I found out that it was a marketable, pro marketable property. And then I got the, the seller's time frame. How quickly do you need to sell? I said, you know, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I, I initially went for a 30 day close with a, a 14 business day inspection period. That was too long. So we, we came down to, um, 10 day close with a seven day inspection period, which is, you know, which is a little short, but for a deal that's good, um, you definitely should be able to, to get it done in that time frame. Okay. So that's, that, that's what I was qualifying there. Um, so that's everything I needed to, to know um, before I did my due diligence. My due diligence was getting off the phone, looking at the comps, making sure the value was what they said it was. Um, and then coming up with an offer. So when I did my comps, I found out that conservatively the property's worth, you know, on the low end, 83 bucks a square foot, which would put it at about 430. And the high end, 93 bucks, which would put it closer to 480. So the, the range I came up with was about 430 to 450. Um, and, and I was able to get it under contract 
for considerably less than that. I want to just give a shout out. Uh, Sonia Tate joined us and Lamont. Hey, thanks. Uh, Corey also joined us. Hey, thanks for joining us, guys. I'm talking with uh, uh, Dirk Waters here. Dirk just did a really great way. Dirk lives in San Diego. He just did a really great real estate deal. Found a property in what state again? Georgia, Georgia, Canton, Georgia. Uh, 3,000 miles away. Uh, he got it under contract. Um, and right now, the uh, let's do some of the numbers once again. Just And I want to simplify this because I think a lot of people sure. are just getting into real estate. They're not as sophisticated maybe as you uh, when you say square footage and the words like comps and things. I don't know if everybody okay. knows what those things mean. Um, let, let's just say the comps are what, what is the actual market value at this time. Right. At the time you buy it, you can also analyze in a certain markets right now, uh, California, San Francisco, San Diego, um, L.A., Orange County. um, um, Oh, gosh, uh, Seattle, Washington. There's appreciation right now. So you can actually forecast uh, if a property is worth one hundred thousand today, a year from now at 10 percent appreciation, it might be worth a one ten or something like that. Oh, beautiful. That's really nice. Thank you. so, but, but you found a property. What was it? What was the market value? What was the comps? The market value was between four hundred and thirty and uh, four hundred and fifty. Four thirty or four fifty? Did it need any repairs? Because that's a that's a number one right. question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, does it need repairs? And what do, what do most people say when you say, uh, "Gee, uh, is there any repairs we got to put in this property?" Hey, J- hey, John and Troy, thanks for joining us, guys. They, they say, no, it was built in 1960. You know, we haven't done anything, but it's still beautiful. Still- New toilet beautiful. seats. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little paint. Maybe a little paint. And then you go there and you smell the 15 cats that were locked in the closet for a week, right? <laughs> oh, you did not that bit. Actually, there's um, one of my uh, students, because I mentor people, Michael Buckles. Mike, uh, Michael works in Atlanta. Michael is, this is going to be gross. So I hope nobody's uh, eating dinner or has the kids listening to this part. Okay. I'm going to add, this is a disclaimer here. Michael has gone in, in Atlanta and found a property with a dead dog in it. No one oh. told him. He just, they told him, go oh, look at the property goes in. And that was there. And then there was another property with a corpus delecti for those. Oh, who, yes. There was a, a, a homeless person who passed away in the house. This does not enhance the value of properties uh, when you do it. But this is welcome to the world of real estate, right? There's uh, always a new adventure uh, Mm -hmm. on a property. I had once a property in La Jolla, California. It was in escrow with a very nice older gentleman. He said, can I have the key to go in there for the decorators and stuff? And I said, sure. I gave him a key. By the way, that's a rule. Never give a key to someone until it's closed, the broad, the deal is Mm -hmm. over. Anyway, I went back to the property. I wanted to check something, make sure I didn't leave some tools behind. And I go in there and there was a guy camped out in a sleeping bag living on the floor. Do you know what it's like going at eight o'clock at night into a condo and someone, and it's been empty for months and you go in there and there's someone living in there you don't recognize? Never had that happen. You don't want that to happen. He was a real nice guy. And he was more scared of me than I. I was scared. I mean, the adrenaline pumping and everything. He said, oh, no, didn't Mr. Smith gave me the key. He said it was OK. You know, and, and, it, and it's like, oh, <laughs> that's a scary thing. There's That's another episode we'll do on Blab. Scary moments in real estate. That's wild. Uh, strange people, d- dead things in there and all that. Back to your deal. So you found this property and you said it was worth. Uh, once again, two hundred and uh, four, four thirty to four fifty. Four thirty to four fifty. Why that range? That twenty thousand discrepancy. What's that all about? It just, um, you know, just it could go for. I mean, just depending on the buyer, the the end buyer that you find. Right. You know, I mean, and, and the comparables. So the the price per square foot on the, the best comparables I've found. You know, it, it kind of fell within that range. You know, the the best one was on the high end, and then the the worst one was on the lower end. So that's why I'm giving that range. Oh, okay. Hey, James Dunwoody finally joined us. James, all you got to do is click on. Um, I think um, am I pointing the right way? You got to point the up. Op- I think this is the right way. You got to point on a little seat there, and you can just come in and join us. And and uh, ten thousand people are going to be watching you right away. There he goes. He joined us. I'm going to interrupt you one more time. And let me see if I can. Um, 
<laughs> did you ever go to your laptop and you press the button you're pressing on your laptop but it doesn't work like an ipad that's what i just did <laughs> oh <laughs> there he is hey how's it going hey good <laughs> hey, uh, uh um dirk do you know james i don't believe so how you doing james good how are you doing Good. Uh, um, you kind of reminded me of the Brady Bunch a minute ago. You were kind of like, uh, which direction? <laughs> yeah, here's the story. And yeah, it, uh, this is a whole new technology. And when I want to point to Dirk, I have to point this way for Dirk to see me. Am I pointing okay. to you right now, Dirk? Yes. Okay. It's actually the opposite on my screen. So. No, this, my, this is this is the right way for me. Now be very careful which finger and how you point it. Okay. <laughs> this, this is the, there's a whole new blab etiquette that we're all learning here right now. Um, uh, James, uh, let me just finish up with Dirk here for one second. Dirk, so you got this property 430 to 450 right. uh, in Georgia. And mm -hmm. what did you get it under? Uh, can you share what you got it under contract for? What you, you want to be totally transparent or what you want to sell it for? We'd like to uh, like to sell it with the assignment fee for 375. So that, that gives... Uh, 55k plus profit to whoever picks it up right away. I mean, it's, it'll be a quick turnaround because it doesn't need any work. Okay, so so someone can make 75 that get this property, and this is a beautiful home. I wish we had some pictures you could show. Actually, here. Oh, oh. let's see if you can see these. Oh God, look at that home there. James. Here's the front of it. Beautiful. James, I love I love that you're driving a car with those cool shades while watching three video screens. Hey, I got to keep the shades on so I'm not uh, <laughs> looking at that the whole time. I'm more listening than anything. Hey, kids, don't do this at yeah. home, okay? <laughs> but look at this property. Oh, God. Go to the top page again just for when you get done with it. I love the – this house is gorgeous. That. Yeah. I mean, that, Beautiful. That's stately Wayne Manor, man. <laughs> I love that house. Swimming yeah, pools a, and movie stars. It's a great house. And there's a kitchen. And you called up these people from 3,000 miles away. You got it under a contract. I'm presuming you have some, you're selling it for $75,000 under a contract. Um, for, um, and I'm presuming you're going to make a little money too. There's nothing wrong. Sure. God bless them. Sure, yeah. Three, uh, 375. So, I mean, right away. If you, if you pick this thing up, you're making at least 55k plus because that 430 value is on on the conservative side. So, so when people say, "Can you get properties under market?" Here is a property that, it, that we would say uh, reasonably you negotiated. I'm not going to get into specifics. Hundred thousand under market, so that you could pass on at least seventy five thousand dollar equity or potential profit to somebody else. Yeah, well, that shouldn't be too hard to sell mm -hmm. in my world. Um, what kind of contract did you use, by the way? Did you use an option agreement, a lease with option, or a sales agreement? Just a, a purchase agreement. Oh, a a simple, agreement. simple two page purchase agreement. Okay. So these people who don't know you from anything, you have no pre existing relationship. You, you had a good conversation. You probably used a little gut strategy there, a little stroking and nurturing and persuasion. Sales is the million dollar skill. You got yourself a purchase agreement or sales agreement. What, can, right. can we ask a, and this contract was, of course, assignable? Of course. Right. Was that, an, was that an issue with these people that you could take this contract and assign it? It wasn't because I, I explained it to them. You know, I, I explained that I, I have people that I work with, you know, across the country, and uh, somebody in Georgia would most likely be uh, picking this up. That's great. Hey, I just want to say hello to Kieran. Hey, Kieran, thanks. Um, that's one of my favorite beers, by the way, from Japan. Uh, you've never heard that before, I'm sure, Kieran. Anyway, and hi, Vicki Taylor. Thanks for joining us. Um, Troy, I see real. What's your name? Of your company, Troy, Real Estate Relief. Troy, that's what it looks like. Oh, that's our fan. Oh, that's our buddy, Troy. Hey, you. Hey, Troy Investments. Yes, Troy, you should come on the video too. James, tell everybody who you are, where you live, and what you do so brilliantly. Um, I'm James Dunwoody. I'm in Kansas City, and I uh, mostly wholesale. 
Um, I do flips too, but not as many of those. I've been doing some more, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, lease purchase type stuff here lately or trying to get more into that instead of wholesaling everything. So just be creative, more as creative as I can be about everything. Tell everybody, hey there, Troy, thanks for joining us. James, tell everybody what a, a car too with the shades. <laughs> uh, okay. hey, get me some sunglasses this is gonna it's gonna be like a blues brothers blab here or something <laughs> yeah um Jay, tell everybody hey you guys tell everybody what's a what is what's a, a what is a Uh, he can't hear me. Uh, he okay. can't hear me. Okay. Y'all are breaking up a little bit on me here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm heading out with my. Oh, oh, oh. Without, without getting in a car, without getting in a car everybody don't stop. Everybody don't stop. we go. I got a. Uh, I got a lease to own uh, uh, property, uh, lease option. My first, my first deal. I've only been working on this for a couple weeks, and so uh, getting these signs out. Got it on Craigslist. Got a response from another investor uh, who they might want to kind of get in on the deal and uh, possibly do a little joint venture. They may have some some, uh, some buyers. So working that, but I'm also getting my own stuff out here. So I got a couple different things working. Did you make those Did you make those signs? Yeah, I went to Home Depot. I bought these signs. You know, they're 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 different than uh, than what you see everybody else do. I thought yellow, man, get get people's attention and uh, look look a little different, so people know it's uh, you know, that it's not not blending in with everything else. Yeah, but we're yeah, but we're we're the groovy we're guys. The groovy guys. All, what we talk about, what we talk about, and here you are hanging up. You are hanging up stuff. What do you know that we? What do you know, know that we don't know? So I'm sorry. Say, say again. Yeah, we're getting feedback. Yeah, we're getting feedback. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to meet. All right, sorry guys. It's all right. Thank you. It's all right. I love Thank the sun. I love the sun. I'm gonna mute him. I'm gonna mute um, him because we were just getting too much, um, feedback, getting too much feedback on the system. I'm sorry, Troy. Still? Can you hear me still? I can hear you well. Good. We, we had to mute uh, you, we Troy. We had to mute you, Troy. We were getting feedback off your phone there or whatever. Um, but, I um, but I love the signs. Uh, old school uh, technology, old school right, technology hanging right hanging a lot of signs up. How cool yeah. is that? How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. Let's, go back, deal, let's go back to your deal, uh, man. So we, uh, so we you're, looking just, you're looking to just this contract, take this contract and sell it to somebody, else, right? Right? To somebody else, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what kind of marketing, um, are, you kind of marketing are you doing? Uh, you're so far uh, away. You're so you're so trying far trying away. Are you trying to market it locally in Georgia? Or are you trying to go for an investor anywhere? What's your What's your strategy here? Really both. Really both. And bring this to Facebook. Target Facebook marketing to, to target specific areas, and and also you know, reaching out to my investor network. I know you've helped me with that a little bit. You know some some of the people you know just picking up the phone, calling investors, and you know getting the property out there as much as I can. Exactly, and this this one deal what you you think you're going to move you think you're going to move it in about the next uh, 15 to 30 have you started uh, um, have you done any kind of, uh, today is marketing actually you're telling people about it if someone in georgia needs a house 75,000 under market in a beautiful area can we uh, can you tell us what part of georgia it's Canyon, georgia a little outside of atlanta okay beautiful area mm -hmm. good schools a lot of uh, the services and stuff oh yeah Great schools, great area. Um, do you have a sign with your phone number on it so it goes on the video, or can you just uh, why don't you just tell people your phone number or, or something like that if they want to call you about this deal? It is 619-839-9757. I love that. Thank you. Look at that sign. Backwards. There you go. Call up Dirk. If you're interested, you know somebody wants to do a deal, you want a joint venture with them, you have a buyer. A pre-qualified buy. This is a cash deal, right? This is no cash deal. Okay. Um, there, uh, somebody said here there are lots of wholesaling groups on Facebook. Uh, blasted on there. Thank you for that. Uh, is, yeah, so that's a good idea. Idea uh, on that. Do you have a landing page with all the pictures and everything that you can link 
from uh, Craigslist and Zillow and Trulia and Redfin? I do. I'll put it in the uh, the sidebar here, the comments. Okay, cool. How about? Um, oh, that's right. You can put it right in there. That's even better than telling and then show holding up the sign. Um, how about? Um, can we put this on YouTube and geographically try to target it through YouTube and Google AdWords to this uh, Camden, Georgia area? Yeah, that's actually what I've done on Facebook, Claude. And I know you've worked a little bit with. Uh, Advertising and it's great because if you haven't used it, what you can do is um, you, you can really narrow down your target market. So if I'm looking in the Canton, Georgia area, I can drop a pin in Canton, do a 25 mile radius, and I can I can target by how much money people make. I can target by net worth. I can target by if they're likely to move, if they've bought property recently. So I can take an area that has three or four hundred thousand people and target maybe five or six thousand people using Facebook's tool. Exactly. Just want to say hello to Leticia uh, Smith from Florida. Th thanks for hello, Leticia. Thanks for joining us. And you're a realtor, too. You should come on here and join us, Leticia, because um, we're just having a real estate gab or blab here. Um, so once again, Dirk in San Diego found this beautiful property, uh, 100K under market. He's reselling it or signing it. Let's tell everybody what a signing is. Is that a, as a strategy in real estate? Okay, whether you're a realtor or a private investor, if we find a good deal and we put it under a contract so that we can now uh, say you know, whether it's owner financing or rent to own, or it's an under market property and all these different wonderful things in creative real estate. We now have, some, we now have a piece of paper that we can sell to somebody else. Don't we? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's interest in the property. Go ahead. Talk about that for one second. I'm going to get a contract that right off my printer here. Yeah. So basically you're just, what you're doing is assigning your interest in that property to, to somebody else. You're not selling the property. So, an example I always like to use, Claude, you remember the company Singular Wireless? Yeah. I was a Singular customer. They were bought by AT&T. Now, when AT&T bought them, Singular basically assigned everybody's wireless agreement to AT&T. So your agreement didn't change. It, the contract didn't change. Somebody else just had the interest in it. They have whatever contract you do, whatever's in the original piece of paper, they have right. to honor it. They cannot change it whatsoever. That's important. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, here's a contract. Taylor, Go ahead. Taylor, I see your question. How much rehab does the deal need? It doesn't need any. It was built in 2004. It's in, it's in great shape. How rare, yeah, how rare is that? Link to the deal. How rare is that, though? Huh? How, I mean, I've found properties where sometimes you have to have a vision thing, I think, in real estate. we we What you found is an anomaly, really. Right. Okay. Yeah. You found decent people who actually took care of that pride of ownership and took care of their property. So, it, you know, it's, it's much easier to market something because most do most people have the vision. When Can they walk into a property when the carpets are dirty or the walls are uh, needs paint or, uh, you know, or the appliances are old? You know, as investors, we need to see past that. We can always replace the refrigerator, hire some painters, get the carpets clean to replace. And these are all things that can be solved with a check. Right. When you, if you have a property that's um, 100000 under market and you have a little capital, you, you can put in a little what I call cosmetic stuff into it. And, um, you know, some people call it sweat equity or cosmetic equity. We can take the, any property and um, do the Home Depot thing and increase the value. So I've had properties where I just put in level or blinds, new toilet seats, got the carpets cleaned, and I raised the price $25,000. And people came in and it smelled nice and it looked nice, you know, and I think we need uh, that's usually the way it is in this business, isn't it? Right. And I think a lot of real estate agents would really agree with that. Even a property that's in good shape, you know, people can't see it unless it's maybe staged and it, it looks really nice. Yeah. You know, a lot of people do lack that vision. So it's really important to have it looking good. Yeah. And um, the tight uh, or V Taylor. um Ask that rehab question. I think you answered it. You were lucky. There was no rehab needed. You showed some of the pictures earlier, how beautiful this uh, property is that you got. And, you know, this is a, a there's so many different ways in real estate to make money. 
Um, and, you know, my, my biggest beef is uh, usually because I do a lot of I like to do a lot. I might do one later today. Why gurus suck? Okay. And I'm not, and I'm a guru, so, you know. But and so the emperor has no clothes. I like to they like to talk about the motivation. Oh, Joe and Mary made all this money and everything. Yes, but what was the perspiration? What did they do? How did they find the deal? How did they negotiate the deal? What did the contracts look like? How did they remarket the deal? You want to jump in on that, James? Um, I was just going to say, with it being so nice, um, have you tried reaching out to any realtors to see if they have any buyers? Because a lot of time, realtors have huge buyers lists, and you could use something from them. I don't know how much time you have on the deal or how quick you need it to close, but uh, if if it's, uh, I mean, I know it's 100K under, and it doesn't need any work. I mean, I don't know that in, most investors would really snag something like that. I mean, what are they what are they going to do? Just turn around and put it back on the market, or are they going to put it, you know, there's not really... I mean, there's still some equity in the property there, but to me, it sounds like someone can move right in and could possibly get a loan too. So, Dirk, and, yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Uh, and I, and I could and should do that. The only thing is the time frame is short, is short, and so to the point where it's probably going to need to be a cash deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to say hello to Joshua. Thanks for joining us, and Terry. Hey, Terry, thanks for coming in here. This is a real estate discussion. Um, but maybe um, we all need some health tips later on, too. Um, yeah, I have a question here from Sensei. How motivated were these people? I think you discussed that a little earlier. I did. Yeah. Yes, they, they were they were motivated. And time was their big factor. Yeah. That was their hot button. Um, it was a divorce situation. So the, the clock is ticking, which is why they went up below market. How fast do you have to move when you recognize the quote unquote, what every guru at every seminar says, find the motivated seller. It's like their mantra, you know, but you, yeah. and, and we wish we had a lot more motivated sellers. I, I call it on the Claude barometer, the eight, nine and tens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We wish we had more of those folks, but when you get somebody like that, what should you instantly do guys? <laughs> Move right away. Uh, strike while the iron's hot. Put it in a contract. Go get, send them a contract right away and make sure you set a time frame for that contract to expire or for them to reply. Get it in. A, and I believe that we can always fix it later. If we go to the property and we find out it needs repairs, we'll go. We can renegotiate, can't we, guys? All right. And we, but the bottom line is, how do we eliminate all the competition? We're in a super competitive real estate market right now. People are complaining to me. Oh, everybody, there's people waiting in line to buy properties in certain neighborhoods, and and I can't find anything. It's because when you find a deal, stop screwing around. You know, get it under a contract. Under a contract right. And then you can check your comps online very quickly. You can look at the property online with what is that? Google Maps or Google Earth? Which one is it? The same thing? Yeah, there's a there's a bunch. Oh of tools. yeah, Hel hello, Telvin Jeffries. For uh, thanks for joining us, guy. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, we're talking with Dirk here and James uh, about real estate deals. Uh, uh, Dirk just found a phenomenal deal, a beautiful property. He's in California. He found it over in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. A uh, hundred thousand under market. He got it under a sales agreement. And he's looking just to sell this thing in the next 30 days or less. And I'll do, we'll do an update on this, okay? I know you're going to sell this contract, not the property. You're not going to rent it. You're not going to rent the property. You're not going to sell the property per se. You're going to sell the contract that represents the opportunity to buy the property. So if you sell this contract to somebody for, let's say, uh, uh, $50,000 and they make 75, whether they're an investor, another investor, or there's someone looking for a good deal or to live in the home, whether they exercise the, uh, whether they get a loan or not, is that your business? Are you involved in any of that? No. I don't no. What are you real? What are we really selling? What are we really talking about? Contract. A piece of paper. You know, uh, I have a, here, what am I I have a napkin, a bar napkin here on my desk. I always look at it to remind me to keep my deal simple. I think we get bogged down in too much guru bullshit. Excuse my language, ladies and gentlemen. But I think we get so worried about all these different pieces of the puzzle. But when we recognize a motivated seller and a good deal, we got to do our due diligence. we got to check the comps. But for, get, out, get it on a contract and eliminate all your competition. And then you can do your homework, your due diligence and renegotiation. 
you can get pay somebody to look at the property if it's far. Did you? That's a good point. How did you? How do you know what the property looks like? Did they walk around with the iPhone on on FaceTime or Skype, or did you pay somebody to look at the property? How do you? Is there a way? To, uh, how do you inspect it from so far away? That, that is a good point. Um, what I've done in the past, you, know, you can reach out to somebody local and then pay them to do it or pay them to take pictures or have the seller do it. Exactly. Does anyone have any? So, uh, Dirk, uh, you're going to what are you going to be doing on Monday? What are you going to be doing this weekend to market this property as quickly as possible? Let's talk a little bit about more. we're doing something right now, aren't we? Right. Let's talk, yeah. can we talk about social media for a minute. And I mean, we saw before Troy is going out there with signs, all of these handmade or these little signs from Home Depot, which I think is brilliant. OK, I think this is so great uh, on there. That's kind of the old school stuff. Um, but what are we what's the new school stuff we can do with all this streaming and social media? Can you help us? Can you share a few secrets on that? Well, this is this is great. This is getting it out to the people on Blab. You can do Periscope, Meerkat, which is very similar. Uh, you can get it out on. You can, after we record this, tweet this, put it up on Facebook. Uh, there's a save link. You can come back and rewatch it. I believe you can do that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah a lot of stuff on social. You can post that link I had. Um, what else would you do? Well, I got to tell you right now because I'm the moderator on this, and I. And uh, I mentor people in creative real estate and sales and social media. And I wanted to interview people because I thought you had a great deal. And I was really proud of you for going out there and hustling and finding this. Right now, besides on Blab, okay, I have my iPhone on my little little stand here going. And it's uh, we're broadcasting this on Meerkat. Okay, so I'm photo, and this is the big thing about Blab. You know, we it's not just one person, like it's on um, Meerkat and Periscope, is just one person giving a lecture and interacting with the texting. Blab is so brilliant because we can have a conversation, a, a, a chat room uh, with the texting and stuff like that. And now I am rebroadcasting it on Periscope and on Meerkat on my iPad. No, iPhone. Right. I, and I know I can't be the only person who thought of this. So literally, I am. We are on three networks right now, uh, talking about your real estate deal. Is that is that is that smart marketing or crazy marketing? There, there's never been more bang for your buck than right now with these platforms. Oh, talk about bang for your buck, man! You, you know, talk tell tell everybody. I know you're a big fan. James can jump in here too. Tell everybody my pet peeve about marketing. You don't like the oh, bottom line. Say it again, James. Say the truth. You don't like to spend much money on marketing. Well, I don't mind spending money on marketing. I just hate BS Your marketing. Your ROI. Low return. Go ahead, go ahead, James. You go first. You, you, you're worried about your ROI. That's it. And then the virtual attraction of it, too. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Dirk. He, he just said what I was, what I was going to say. You, you love the, the good return on investment. We'll spend the money, but with all these free tools, why spend the money? What drives me crazy, and I'm going to do a segment later this afternoon, why gurus suck. And why they suck is because they're talking about old marketing. And I, I respect, listen, hanging up signs, if it's allowed in your community, nothing's better than a good sign in a prominent intersection. I'm not disparaging it. What I hate is the gurus who are telling people to buy an obscure mailing list of absentee owners with no connection whatsoever, and then send them a redundant email or, 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 or a yellow letter or a postcard to these people. And, you know, and uh, Telvin's going to join us here. My, my thing is, what is the expense versus the ROI? Okay. And everyone's just hammering the same lists anyway. So it's like the same, exactly. same postcard, same letter. It might just be worded a little differently. It says the same thing. Yeah. And great point. You know the thing about I'm, I, and people always misunderstand me. I'm not against marketing and mailing and email blasts and stuff like that. I'm against spending thousands. Of, I keep hearing the same story from too many people. I just spent five thousand, ten thousand, eighteen thousand dollars on all these mailers, and then I always ask the question: How many phone calls did you get? How many responses did you get? And when people tell me five, ten, fifteen people called. 
after spending thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. I think that's a really, pardon my language, ladies, that's a shitty ROI. And I'm in business to make money, and I want the biggest bang for my buck. Now, I know the guru argument is, oh, but if they get one deal, you know, yeah, but a lot of times they don't get the one deal to replenish their, their marketing fund. And when we're doing social media marketing like this, and I think putting out compelling content in a hopefully interesting or entertaining way that's non-commercial, but for relatively non-commercial, it's sublimal. It's second. Our primary for, uh, thing is to introduce ourselves to people. Our secondary thing is to let people say, "Hey, maybe Dirk or or James or Troy or 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 Claude or Telvin or somebody has some good information. Maybe I can like them. Maybe I like them. Maybe I can trust them." I think that's the subconscious part of this kind of social media marketing. Uh, on this, disagree, agree with me, guys. I don't want to get on a soapbox here too long. I agree. I totally agree. Telvin, you're trying to come in, but for some reason, you're. Do you do you hear us? Did you want to join in? Telvin doesn't seem to be working. Okay, we're gonna. Telvin, try to lock, try to come in again. And uh, Leticia, you got to join us here. You're a real estate agent. Why don't you jump in here? Don't be, don't be shy. We need some ladies in here. Um, but let's talk about marketing. So you're gonna you're gonna do this and, and maybe show pictures on. Uh, uh, are you gonna use YouTube or anything like that, or a link to a video, or or are you gonna buy drones and take pictures around the property and things like that? That's a good idea. I probably won't do that for this one. Uh, but I, I do. I had a really nice. I, I posted it earlier. I have a perspectives with pictures and comps and everything in there. I've posted a link for that. I have the link everywhere. Facebook, Twitter. That's great. Facebook ads. Hey. And just reaching out to as many investors as I can. That's great. Hey, we got Leticia with the Caldwell Banker sign behind her there. Hey, how's it going? Jump in here. Jump in here. We, need a, we need some ladies in this, uh, in this group. <laughs> How are you? What do you do? Tell us about yourself. We uh, am at the office today, so that's why I didn't jump on. Um, as and where do you live? You're in Florida. Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Can can and, and you got a good deal on a condo near Disneyland? Disney World, excuse me. We in California, we have the real one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was a fake. How long have you been a realtor? Okay, you need to get closer to your mic here. A couple, of years. a couple of years, good. How do you like it? Good. What do you think about uh, the deal? What do you think about this deal Dirk has in Georgia? Hundred thousand under market. Sounds good. Um, like you were saying before, you probably need to get you know with a real estate agent in the area and see if he can collaborate with them to sell it quickly. Why well, isn't that you? help you refer you someone for sure okay let's do that that's what i want to hear networking when you network with somebody are you going to be able to make some money on that transaction yeah I'll, i say it like you mean it leticia yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's i mean i'm not ashamed i think you know, the salesperson comes first i think people you know who do business honestly we're trying to facilitate transactions deserve to get paid we don't have to be ashamed of it free at last <laughs> you know, exactly. I, uh, so if you can refer someone to Dirk, did you get his phone number there? Uh, right now. It's, it's on the sidebar there, 619-839-9757. Is that right, Dirk? That is correct. Okay. Um, if you, if somebody I got it, Dirk. Okay, yeah, if you know of um, and maybe a, a, the t uh, if you can connect Dirk with the top Caldwell person in is it Camden, Georgia? Canton. Canton, excuse me. C A N T O N. Okay, Dirk? I can do that. Yeah. Now Dirk has a sales agreement uh, with the motivated sales. What's your time frame on this, Dirk? How much time is the clock ticking on this puppy? It is. Yeah. Sure. So you can. Do you have at least thirty to sixty days? No, less than that. Wow. Did you wow. Fought, when you negotiated your agreement? Did you put insert an extension clause? I actually, 
I did not, but um, that's something I can do next time. I, I, I may be able to negotiate that with them. And, and okay, and, and you know, part of the thing when you're, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we just, okay, we lost, um, uh, we lost somebody there. Um, anyway, you know, when you're negotiating a contract and you have 30 or 60 days, make sure you have a paragraph in there for an extension. So that when you do find a deal and maybe you found somebody in the last day of your contract, you have that extra 30 days, even if you have to reward them, say, OK, I'll give you another five hundred dollars or something like that. If we can extend it another 30 days, this is foresight in contract negotiation. Uh, as far as that goes and the and what else should be in a good contract when you're doing these deals? How about assignability? Right. That's the most important. I want to ask Leticia. Leticia, uh, 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 contracts you have in the state, in the uh, great state of Florida, you, most board of realtor state of Florida contracts are non-assignable, aren't they? Correct. Okay. So how do you make them assignable? Do you have to cross out that particular paragraph in both parties initial? Yes. Okay. That's generally how you do it. I think if you just put and or assigns, that's not enough if you have a paragraph that says no assignment. Agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a contract, and, and this is some good general law on this. I'm a recovering attorney, um, but I'm, I'm in a 10 step program. Forgive me. Okay. Um, uh, um, the thing about it is, if a contract says nothing about assignments, then the courts usually give a presumption of assignability. Was that as confusing as mud? Was that okay? So if it doesn't say anything about an assignment, you can assume that it is assignable. Personally, I like verbiage in my contract, so there's no miscommunications. You know exactly. I agree. Yeah. What else? Uh, give us a tip here, Leticia. What do you think is your best? What's your favorite thing to put in a contract when you're doing a real estate deal? Extension. <laughs> well, this is good. Um, how about subject to clauses? I'm big on that, Dirk. What's your, well, you got some subject to or conditional clauses you like to add? I, I like for a particular deal like this, subject to uh, approval and inspection by the buyer to be completed in writing, however many days. Okay. Uh, inspection. What about a review by the attorney? Is that a, is that a good, uh, what we, we used to call them weasel clauses, but, or escape, they're now they're called escape clauses. Escape clauses. <laughs> um, subject to an attorney, review by an attorney, is that a good way out? How subject to always, is there a presumption, Leticia, you would know this, of financing when someone's buying a home, if they can't qualify for a mortgage, does that have to be in writing to excuse them out of the contract? Uh, it's already in there. Uh, they have uh, uh, 30 days. From the time it's executing the contract. Okay. So, you know, so, uh, if you're doing a private deal, maybe not using a, a, a standard uh, board of realtor uh, contract, I would always put in there subject to the financing. If you're doing a, a real estate investing deal, uh, you could put in subject to finding an assignee or a tenant uh, on the pot or another buyer, whatever mm -hmm. verbiage you want. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in breach of contract. Exactly. Uh, on that. Um, do in, in Florida, I, I, I want to know when someone puts earnest money down and they, uh, just decide that they, they just had a change of mind. They, there was no subject to where they couldn't get the financing or anything like that. They just changed their mind. People do that. Do they lose their earnest money deposit? No, you just, uh, do an amendment, um, and, uh, let them know why, uh, because you still have, you know, time because we haven't done that home inspection uh, as of yet. So you still have time to back out of the deal, either or, whether it's the seller side or the buyer okay, side. Okay, so they use the home inspection clause uh, on there. Have you ever seen a deal where people did not get their earnest money returned? No. I find that interesting. So, so, any, wow. so anybody can breach a contract, right, Dirk? Or? Uh, actually, hey guys, I gotta, I gotta take off. Okay. Um, I gotta go. Okay, I'm gonna go too. It was nice to meet you, Yeah, What's I got that? your information. I wrote it down and I posted my information in there as well, my telephone number as well as my email. Great. I just, uh, I just took it down. Awesome. I look forward to working with you. you got, Me too. You got a great take care, smile, guys. Leticia. No, oh, thank you. you. Got a great smile. Uh, before you go, Dirk, thirty seconds. Give your phone number and talk and and summarize that deal you have in case someone else is listening. 
deals a great below market deal in Canton, Georgia. It does not need any repairs. Uh, new build from 2004, worth uh, 430, 450 conservatively, uh, asking 375 with an assignment fee. So there's there's a lot of beef in there. Show the picture uh, real 60, quick. 60k plus. Show the picture. I know you're running to go get a Corona beer and a fish taco at the beach. That's not it. <laughs> here, here it is. Here's the front of it. Isn't that a nice that looking? Awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Found that deal under market, three thousand miles away. Round of applause to you, Dirk. I'll let you go, buddy. Thank you. Six one nine eight three nine nine seven five seven. All right, good. Uh, and Take care, guys. a pleasure to meet you. I'm gonna click on here. So if you do your blab, I can find I can find you in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who's watching. Thanks for participating. All my friends on Meerkat and Periscope and uh, Blab. And uh, you guys have a great and wonderful, safe weekend. Leticia, you were so brave. You came on. Bravo to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.